youtube welcome to this new review slash roast slash whatever you want to call it of the website nadia or not and today we are going to focus on the article they wrote about jeff nipple again what i'm doing with these videos is i'm just debunking the poor logic that i see in these arguments because it tends to apply to every single stratus of youtube fitness and it is a good opportunity for me to base my reasoning on an article and on certain segments or writings that I disagree with. And it gives a structure uh, to my ramblings. That way I don't just speak in the void. I actually have something to base my arguments on. And uh, I decided to do Jeff Nipper today because I read the article and it was full of uh, nonsense and intellectual fallacies and therefore it's very interesting to uh, dissect. So we're going to get on the case immediately. I'm going to put in the description of the article. So if you want to read it before you watch this video, you want to follow it, it's up to you. And the title of the video is very straightforward. It's called Natty or Steroids. And it, it opens with a picture of Jeff Nippard when he was doing a competition because he competed in powerlifting. So, they start by giving his stats and they base the stats on a video from 2016 where apparently Nippert was 165 at 8% body fat. Right off the bat, you understand that this is not possible. Jeff Nippert is a small dude. Uh, 165 is fairly low in terms of weight, but for someone who's 5'5", it's not that low of a weight. And at 8% body fat, it would represent an amount of lean body mass that is highly impossible to reach. So if, if those stats were actually true, then yes, he wouldn't be natural. The issue is that, again, he wasn't 8% body fat. Uh, you can go check out that video. That video is still online. He was maybe between 13 and 14% body fat at that time. 12% would be the lowest uh, that he could pot potentially have attained at that time, but it's very obvious that he's not below 10%. And they base that body fat on A, his word, because he said that he was at that percent, and on DEXA scans and an electronic scale. An electronic scale cannot tell your body fat percentages. That's just uh, out of the question. They're not accurate at all. Every time I step on one of these, they tell me 12% or 14% body fat. So they're not accurate at all. And as far as DEXA, DEXA scans go, uh, all of that YouTube science uh, category uh, tends to have a hard on for that method. That method doesn't work either. We know ways where you can man uh, artificially alter the, the results of a DEXA scan, especially if you do several in a row by manipulating your water intake. But even then, they themselves are not accurate. And they're not accurate because the DEXA scan that Jeff did gave a 8.4% body fat result, which he absolutely was not at that level of lean, leanness and lean mass. And they say here that, oh, it's a very accurate and effective way to register body fat. They say that because A, it confirms their science bias and B, because it helps them, in that case, call him a non-natty. Because if the results of the DEXA scan were accurate, he wouldn't be natural. But they're not. And just because it is trusted by elite sports lab and research facilities doesn't mean that it's accurate. I mean, science can be faulty. Science is faulty more often than it is right. He, they also give his height, his 5'5", and that's going to be very important for the rest of the article which gives him an FFMI that is extremely high. And when you see his scans, he has a ton of, uh, body ma of uh, muscle mass. And after that, they move on to El Famoso FFMI. And they say that he, because he is uh, above 25, he's actually at 27, he cannot be natural. And they explain sort of the history behind the FFMI. The FFMI was created in 1995. And they took a sample of 150 athletes, half of which used steroids and half of which did not use steroids. The reason why that study is faulty is that it did not control for the training regimen of these men. 
it did not control for the amount of time these men had been spent training and also they took athletes but an athlete is not necessarily going to be the type of uh, sportsman that is the most focused on building muscle mass they will build mass so that they can perform well in their sports but they're not going they're going to completely ignore certain areas of the body because it is not specific to their sport so that study again i think is completely worthless which is why the idea of ffmi is completely worthless because that 25 that they got at the end that was supposedly the separation between natural and non-natural was based on the 40 uh, uh, uh sample uh, pool of samples pool of uh, guinea pigs whatever you want to call it so you cannot take that number as the gold standard because it is not accurate which is why the fact that he has 27 means absolutely nothing and they uh, actually in this article they uh, they talk about that they say that the system receives significant criticism and many try to render it inaccurate or useless which is what what, what i'm trying to do and then they use Alpha Destiny criticism of the FFMI to show that the FFMI is actually accurate. All right, I like Alex from Alpha Destiny. He does have a tendency to over exaggerate certain points, and by doing that, he renders his points null. It, it's just the way it is in YouTube fitness. You want to embellish certain things, you want to use hyperboles so that you keep the others engaged. I do that sometimes too. I try to refrain from doing that. Why? Because it opens gaps in your, result, uh, your reasoning and it's not logical. The, re the issue with this is that Alpha Destiny said that the formula does not account for bone thickness and therefore a short man who has extremely thick bones could break the formula because blah, blah, blah. I don't, that sentence makes no sense. They don't even read themselves after they write, it seems. Basically, they based that on Alpha Destiny's words. The issue is that Alpha Destiny, he gave an example of a man who is 5'5 with 10 inches wrist. If you know anything about the human body, you already know that this is stupid because a man who is 5'5 with 10 inches wrist, you might have 0.0001% of the male population on earth that is going to meet those criteria. It, it, those two don't go hand in hand. The taller you are, the bigger your frame is supposed to be, the bigger your wrist have the potential to be. So if you're 5'5", five five, it's not impossible to have 10 inches wrist, but it's, it's, it's really rare. And therefore, there's so much wrong with this also, because just because you have thick wrist does not mean that the rest of your skeleton is gonna be thick, right? I have super thin baby wrists. They're below 6.5 inches. The rest of my body is not like that. My knees are average. My ankles are bigger than the average. The human body doesn't work like that, right? You're, just because one of your joints is bigger or smaller does not dictate that the rest of your joints will follow suit. So that this is what we call a straw man. Because in a sense, they latched onto a poor argument made by Alpha Destiny to completely destroy any attempt that anyone could make at pointing out the fact that the FFMI is not correct. But that is intellectually dishonest because they, out of all of the examples they could have picked, they picked the one that they knew they could debunk. Therefore, it is very, it's a, uh, it, it just, it is mentally and morally bankrupt to do that because it's, it's not based on reality. And so they continue, they really uh, expand on that, where they picked that one example that is completely stupid and they, they base their entire reasoning uh, around that. They use a graph where they show the average risk, they show that it's not possible to have a 10 inch risk, which I agree with. Uh, and therefore, bone density can, can have an impact on FFMI, but it will not have as big as an impact as some people think. So they say that the claim of Alpha Destiny that the FFMI is invalid by default because it doesn't account for infrequent scenarios is subject to criticism because most statistical studies target the majority rather than the minority, which I don't disagree with. The issue is that 
I personally don't base my reasoning on the, the fault or the issues of FFMI on, on bone structure. I base it on the very uh, stats that this type of calculus uses to determine whether someone is natty or not. Especially when you realize the fact that we do not know how to measure body fat well. So if you include body fat in the, in the calculator, you're going to get a result that is not accurate. And I have sort of, uh, and it makes total sense when you understand too that differences in body fats are going to directly have an impact on the difference of, on lean mass. Because if you underestimate body fat, all of the body fat percentages you got wrong are now transformed into muscle that is going to push the guinea pig that you're analyzing above 25. So even if I said 25 is not an accurate number, even if that, that was the case, you would go beyond, but in reality, you're not beyond 25. Why? Because it's easier to put on fat than it is muscle. But if someone takes 3 or 4% body fat off of your real stats and then transforms that into muscle, you, you just gained pounds and pounds of lean mass that you don't have. So, of course, the results of the FFMI calculus are going to be wrong. Blah, blah, blah. And then they go on to an hypothesis. They say, Let's assume that Jeff Nippert is 100% natural. What would happen if he decided to go on a steroid cycle? I covered that in the Buchenhagen video. You cannot base any type of analysis on an hypothetical. For someone who seems to be obsessed with science, they don't understand that. You cannot base the previous results of someone who is natural on the potential results they will get for when they jump on steroids. You don't know if they're going to be receptive. You don't know if they're going to develop health issues that are going to force them to stop. And you also don't really know how much weight they're going to get because here they say they're going to get 10 pounds of muscle mass after a few mild steroid cycles. We have almost no data on the impact of steroid use on advanced athletes because most of what we have and most of what happens in this situ fitness game is people who jump on these drugs are not advanced most of the time they're not even late intermediates they're noobs who barely put the work in why because they were told like people by people like this that you cannot do anything naturally you cannot accomplish anything naturally and therefore it's better to just jump on PEDs, right? We, and at the end of the day, there are also a lot of people who become very advanced and very naturally successful and then jump on it, but it's so rare. Like, I don't know what percentage it represents, but the amount of guys who spent 10 years really working hard and then did steroids to sublime their, their physique is maybe 1.05%. Just by virtue of the fact that almost no one spends 10 years training. I made a video about it called No One Trains for 10 Years. And it still holds true. No one trains for 10 years. So after that, they based the new stats that Nippert would obtain after he gained 20 pounds of muscle because he took steroids. So they say he would be 180 at 5'5 and 8% body fat. They write, I will keep the body fat unchanged, although his body fat percentage should technically drop if his gains are lean. So we're dealing with someone that pedals PED use, tries to push it to noobs by saying that nothing is possible naturally, and doesn't even understand the PED use because they think you gain only lean mass. Okay, I know I have some dudes on this channel who know there are ways around PEDs. I've done my research. The compounds you're going to take to gain weight are wet compounds. You don't gain pure muscle on these. You gain muscle, yes, but you also gain fat and water weight. And that guy thinks that if he, Jeff Nippert, were to put on 20 pounds, he would get leaner. So he would recomp. Nonsense. Like anyone who knows anything about steroids know that this is not possible. 
you will gain a lot of tissue that is not going to be muscle. But because of the distribution and because of the rather retention, it's not going to look as bad as a natural who gained the same weight. This is why when you see an enhanced athlete who goes on a bulk, their muscles look bigger and bigger and they look like they're inflated with water and everything around here gets big, but down there they don't gain that much vis visceral fat. Why? Because the hormonal profile that they've entered because, because of the wet compounds promotes that type of uh, water gain and it is just going to make them bigger basically, but they're not getting pure muscle. So. This is adding insult to injury, right? If you're going to write articles about steroids, at least do your research. Don't just r randomly say things because this is 100% incorrect. And now they say that if he did a cycle, his FFMI would be 28, great. And then, <laughs> and then they compare that to Serge Nubre. I, I am wondering if Blaha is not behind. If, the issue is there are not many grammatical uh, errors in here, so it cannot be him, but the obsession with Serge Nubre is becoming really concerning. I've read two articles by them, I've made two videos on it, and the two times they mention Serge Nubre. And they, mean, they say that Serge Nubre was uh, 200 pounds at 5% body fat. Again, Serge Nubre was never even close to 5% body fat. They also say that Schwarzenegger was 245 at 5% body fat. He was never 5% body fat. And they say that Franco Colombo was 185 at 5% body fat. He was never 5% body fat. There, there's going to be a video dropping this week where I'm going to explain why the body fat percentage means nothing because people don't know how to calculate it. But it's critical because those dum-dums base their assumptions of someone being natural or not on the body fat they carry. And because they vastly underestimate the body fat that a human male carry on their frame, especially when muscles come into play, all of their calculus, all of their schemes mean nothing. It's, it probably is the most pivotal uh, theme that I need to explain on this channel because it's also key for natural bodybuilding. So they say, in conclusion, Nippert is a few cycles away from acquiring an FFMI that would classify him as an elite bodybuilder. Again, that guy doesn't understand anything about bodybuilding. Muscle mass is important for bodybuilding, yes, but the guy with the most muscle doesn't necessarily win on stage. It's quite the opposite, actually. Uh, the way your muscles attach, the way the, the body looks, the flow, the way you pose, all of that are more important than how heavy you are. If it just took stepping on stage at 300 pounds, Big Ramy would have been winning titles for five years now. And then they say, in case you don't know, a cycle or two don't make a professional bodybuilder. It takes more time in the drug zone to acquire that much mass. Yes, it is true. It takes a long time because you want your body to stay in the hormonal profile long so that the muscles can accumulate the tonnage and become bigger and bigger. After that, they say, or they try to debunk, which is my argument that as he is big because he is short. No one is making that argument. Again, that's a straw man. No one says he's big because he's short. Everyone understands that tall men have a higher potential for mass, for pure mass and pure body weight and lean mass. Why? They have more space to build the mass. The issue is that because they have more space, it takes much longer and they face a certain amount of issues when it comes to leverages that short dudes don't face. And I'm personally stuck in the middle because I'm six feet, but my limbs are sort of, they're not short, but they're not long. I have a, 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 a small frame, so I'm in the middle for me. But understand that if you're tall, if you're six feet, especially if you're lanky, you have potential to be a massive monster, but it's going to take a long time. And they say uh, it seems to be the dominant opinion that shorter bodybuilders get bigger. They say there's no logic behind that statement and they explain what I just explained. The taller you are, the more potential you have for mass. And then they say, oh, if you modify the statement and say he looks big because he is short, which is what everyone is saying, it makes more sense. And then they say, and that's important, a man who is 5'9", 5'10", would look like he lifts if he was to borrow the lean body mass of Nippert. Nope. 
they, all, they don't understand how much of a difference it makes when your segments become bigger. A 19-inch upper arm on uh, the arm of someone who's 5'5 or 6'5 looks completely different. A guy who's 5'5 with that type of measurements, will they will look like they have a football in, in lieu of an arm. Someone who's 5'5 might even look flat. Their, their arms might not even look that impressive at that size. So they don't, again, they don't understand bodybuilding because they don't practice because they're most likely a skinny dweeb. Then they say, how strong is he? And again, just to go back on that because they completely skip that point afterwards. Yeah, Jeff Nippel looks big because he is small. That's not a, an attack. Being small is a good thing for bodybuilding. Why? You have smaller segments. You're going to look more 3D because it's easier to look big with less muscle on your frame. So you're going to look big faster. If you take a picture of Jeff Nippet and you put it next to a picture of me, if the two pictures are at the same scale, he's going to look much bigger than me, much leaner than me, and he will win every single bodybuilding competition. The shortcoming of being a, sm a short lifter is that once you're on stage and you're put next to someone that has 40 pounds on you and six or seven inches, he will dwarf you. He will make you look small. But the good thing about bodybuilding is that it's about aesthetic, it's about the flow, it's about the way the package looks. So the tall, big, heavy dude doesn't always win, which is why we have giant killers like Lee Priest. But understand that just because you're short doesn't mean you're going to have that. So how strong is Jeff Nippert? In 2015, Jeff reveals that he has a 200 kilo squat, so 440 a 350 bench, so 160 kilos, and a 205 kilos deadlift, so 450. I think his lifts are still right now in the same waters, which, which would point in the direction of him being natural because he's making very small progress. And they say that he was 150 at the time, so it means that he had a three times body weight squat, two times body weight bench, three times body weight deadlift, and they say, those lifts represent world-class strength. No, it took me five seconds on Google to look up the numbers for people who would be in his class to see that he is nowhere near world-class strength. He is hundreds of pounds away from world-class strength. He's not weak, but he wouldn't place well in any serious powerlifting competition with those lifts at that weight. And they say finding a natural who can match them would be a hard task. No. Um, when I used to go to my unit gym, I knew guys uh, 150 that could hit those numbers. I mean, the shorter you are, absolute strength and everything is not really my forte, so I'm not going to uh, really speak about that too much. But there is such a thing as uh, pound for pound strength favoring smaller lifters, which is what we see here. And again, uh, Nippert is much stronger than me on everything besides the deadlift. And I think even the deadlift now is stronger than me. I'm not saying that to make myself look good. I'm just saying that he is not that strong. His strength does not point out to the fact that he is doing steroids at all. Does Jeff Nippert have the 3D Photoshop look? Yes, he looks too big for his frame and he showcases 3D delts. Natural has a hard time creating an effect combining fullness, leanness, and width. Welcome to pictures, welcome to lightning, welcome to uh, actually knowing what you're doing. If you're on YouTube fitness, unless you're like me and you're a dum-dum, have someone else take your pictures, have a good lightning, don't have a, a stupid garage light that goes out every five seconds, and you're gonna look pretty good. Manipulate the angle so that you look bigger. You can shed off four or 5% body fat. You can look much bigger than you actually are, especially when you're a short man, if you have the right angle and the right lightning. Blah, blah, blah. They talk about 3D delts. 3D delts are possible when you're natural. Depending on the pose and the way you angle your body, they are possible. You're not going to have the big, bulky, like, uh, uh, popping delts that steroid users have, but you still can have pretty capped shoulders. Dun, dun, dun. And then they say, oh, the fact that he's drug tested means nothing. And I agree. Uh, there are ways to pass drug tests without being natural. Yes, drug tests mean nothing because you can pass drug tests. This is why this entire natty or not thing is in a way stupid because you can never resolve it. And you have to base your reasoning on objective facts instead of basing them on hard numbers like FFMI or 3D delts that mean nothing. 
And after that, it goes into a, a weird philosophical rant where they say that a man is known by the company he keeps. And they say that fake natties hang out with fake natties. Uh, I don't necessarily disagree with that. They, there is some uh, truth to that. But it's YouTube fitness, man. If you want to have a big channel, you're going to have to collab and you're going to have to collab with fake natties. Why? Because fake natties have an audience. Fakers have an audience. Why? Because they attract attention. And they also represent a male power of fantasy that is very attractive to young men, which make up the vast majority of YouTube fitness. And they're beginners, so they are easy to swindle. Blah, blah, blah. <sighs> yeah. After that, they say, oh, Jeff Nippert has had a collab with John Meadows, which I hope he's doing well. Uh, and they say obvious dressers. Like, Meadows never claimed to not be a dresser. He was an IFBB pro. Of course, he takes steroids. In conclusion, factors suggesting that Jeff Nippert is not natural. He tells you that he's natural. This is the worst argument I've ever heard. I, people tell me that too. On my transformation video, I put natural transformation. And people say, well, why did you put natural there? It means that you're not natural. What type of inverse, reverse psychology logic is that? If I hadn't put natural in there, people would have assumed it wasn't. Again, those people are really looking forward to getting excuses and being able to call themselves natural because they're small. By the way, just completely gratuitous. I just spit on my screen. A dick I want to take at the guy. On the right side, um, he, I think he's trying to promote or peddle books. Maybe that he, he's written himself. There's one called The Training Focus, a training manual. And I think he took a picture of himself for the cover of that book. He is a skinny dweeb. Like 40, 14 inches arms, uh, sort of sort some abs, but he looks like he's like 150. I understand why, why he's hating so much because the guy is small. If he spent less time writing articles and more time lifting and studying programming, he would be big. That aside, to get back to the conclusion of this article, he also says that he has a deep understanding of the human body and lifting, which all of that is ironic, of course, right? They, they, he, they say training, I'm going to quote because this is, Training programs do not have the capacity to break the natty limit. They like to repeat that. This, mean, this means no, makes no sense. For they are incapable of stimulating a, a natural synthesis of muscle protein. I will make a video maybe dedicated to that. They are under the impression that your ability to synthesize protein is what determines how big you get. What they don't understand and that is that uh, that ability evolves as you get bigger. The bigger your muscle gets, the more of an ability they have to synthesize protein. Why? Because there is more muscle fiber in the muscle group. Genius. It took me five seconds to figure it out. You don't need science to figure that out. The more the muscle grows, the more it's going to ask for protein, the more it's going to increase its ability to break down the protein and synthesize them. The bigger it gets and the more the cycles repeat, which is why the natural limit does not exist. And how do you get your muscle to create more fiber? You train and you follow a training regimen that is going to uh, promote progression so that the muscle has to adapt. Is it going to be fast? No. Is it going to work? Yes, 100%. Which is why there is no such thing as a natural limit. Blah, blah, blah. So that they basically list stuff to say that he is natural, but they're being sarcastic. So they say he tells you he's natural. He understands programming. Uh, they say the FFMI calculator doesn't work, which it doesn't work. And he is drug tested. After that, they say factors suggesting that he is not natural. He is too big and lean for his height. One, big is completely relative. I, Jeff is cool, but if you put it next to me, I'm going to dwarf him. Just by virtue of me being much heavier and much taller, if, if we're put on a stage, I'm going to lose 100% because he's, I think, a much better bodybuilder than I am. And after that, they say he's too lean, but they don't know how to uh, accurately assess body fat. So how do you know he's too lean? You're taking 5% body fat off of his stats every time. So you don't know that. He has the 3D look. That means nothing. He has insane strength. Does he? I'm not blown away by his lifts. His bench is impressive, but he has short T-Rex arms, so I'm not really surprised by that. A 450 deadlift is impressive, really? I mean, the, the, the 
you know, the pound for pound strength at some point doesn't work anymore. A 400 pound strongman is not going to have a four times body weight pull, but their pull is still impressive. It's much easier when you're smaller and shorter to have impressive pound for pound strength. This is why the, and again, I'm, I'm completely talking, I'm out of my lane completely, I'm not a powerlifter, but the Wilt system is broken. Why? Because very small and uh, very light uh, female competitors have insane works. Why? Because their pound for pound strength is insane because the way it's calculated, it favors people who are very light. And they also say, and they finish the article on a cop out, which I'm not surprised because the person who writes the articles is a coward. One thing is certain though, most people don't have the capacity to build that mass 100% naturally. So they leave the door open at the end. They're like, oh, I just spent, uh, who knows how many words saying that the guy wasn't natural, but just in case he is, let me cop out. Let me include one sentence that says, oh, maybe he's just a genetic freak. No, you know what he is? He's a guy that's been training for a super long time and that understands how it works, right? And in my opinion, Jeff Nippert is 100% natural. So that's going to be that for the day. Uh, we're going to keep exploring that website because there are, it's, a, it's a treasure trove for someone like me. I'm going to keep promoting the, the natural potential and I'm going to keep debunking the natural limit. So thank you for uh, watching that video. I will make many more. Uh, be on the lookout for the video about body fat percentages because I think it is going to open a lot of eyes. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.